Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to take a look at this thing right here, which is the Lenovo Idea Center Mini 5 or Mini 5i, depending on which piece of Lenovo marketing material you look at. It's, it's very confusing, but this thing made me absolutely laugh for a number of reasons, and I can't wait to get into this. Now, the first one is just clearly the name. Let's get kind of get that out of the way first. This is the Idea Center Mini, right? But the Mini is typically what you would see HP use as their like one liter PCs. You have like the Elite Desk Mini, Pro Desk Mini, all that kind of stuff. And Lenovo usually calls theirs Tiny, and that's our Project Tiny Mini Micro, because uh, Dell is micro, right? And But this is actually called a Mini, even though it's a Lenovo box. So that's totally crazy. But this one is actually really important right now, because Lenovo has been heavily discounting these as part of their Black Friday and Cyber Week and all those kind of promotions for the holiday season. These things actually are on sale, and that actually makes them a pretty good value. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean later in this video. But of course, this is STH. So not only are we going to talk about, you know, the pricing and performance and all that kind of stuff, power consumption, but I'm also going to tear this thing apart and show you why this thing made me absolutely laugh like crazy once I figured out what was going on. And if you don't know Project Tiny Mini Micro, we're taking a look at all these one liter PCs from HP, Dell, and Lenovo, and we're just kind of looking at them and you know doing the compare and contrast. Now, most of these one liter PCs that we've done, and we have an entire playlist, you can go check that out, but the vast majority of these systems that we've actually done, these are really kind of focused at like corporate buyers. I actually think that this is kind of more of a consumer style system, but you're gonna see some similarities that are just, I think gonna make anybody that's seen that series just laugh. And yeah, why even hide it? Let's just kind of get into it. So. This is the Idea Center, and this is the Lenovo Think Center M90Q Tiny, which we've already done a review on this one. We actually have the Gen 2 one, so you're gonna see that pretty soon. And that one actually, uh, there's, there were some deals on that one. That one was actually awesome as well, but you know, basically very similar. Uh, so I just wanna kind of show the two of them side by side. And you might say, okay, well, the this one over here has a little bit of plastic and you know maybe some, some fabric on top. This one's all metal, it's black, it's a little bit smaller. I mean, this is actually a little bit larger. And you might look at these fronts and think to yourself, wait a sec, these are completely different systems systems, aren't they? I mean, on the Idea Center, the power button and everything, that's on the right-hand side. Well, on the Think Center, it's on the left-hand side. So of course, these are completely different systems, right? Let me blow your mind. Now that I've done this, you can actually see that the power button and the USB ports and all those kind of things actually line up. So the kind of crazy way that these guys actually did this is they basically took the motherboard and they flipped it in the Idea Center. I mean, and so like, let's just start with the materials. They literally said, hey, uh, well, why should we go and have a nice little metal chassis when instead we could have a plastic chassis with the fabric? But as we're gonna see, they didn't actually get rid of that metal chassis entirely. They just kind of made the serviceability way worse. All right, so why don't we go over the ports of this system real quick. So on the front of the system, we have the power button, but then we have two ports. We have the USB type C port, and that is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. And then we also have a type A port that's also USB 3.2 Gen 1. I hate saying that like all the time. It's just the worst. The other thing that you'll see is that we have a combo audio jack. So if you want to put a headset, you can totally go do that. All right. Now on the back of the system, we have basically, again, this is the flipped version, but we basically have the same kind of thing that we would see on a Think Center where we basically have, we start out with the network port and the Kensington lot port, but we also have this network port, one gigabit networking. That is what it is. You'll see that we have a block of three USB ports, another USB type A port over here. These are all USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports as well. For video output, we have the HDMI, and that's a HDMI 1.4 port, and then we also have a DisplayPort 1.2 port. Something that is a little bit different between this and the Think Center Tinies is that this section right here on a Think Center Tiny would normally be reserved for adding additional optional ports, whether that's additional display output puts, you could get like a USB port, there's all kinds of things that you could put there. And this has the plastic that's covering that, so you cannot go and add something, you know, like extra ports to this like you would one of the Think Centers. Now, getting inside one of these Think Center systems is super easy. You basically have one screw in the back, you pop off the top and boom, you're inside ready to go. And if you wanna to get to the back or the memory and all that kind of stuff in the system, there's basically just this little panel on the back. You pull that thing off, boom, you're inside. And while Lenovo definitely has a class leading solution in terms of serviceability for those tiny systems or the Think Center tiny systems, this mini is uh, nowhere near as good. And let me just kind of show you because I think you guys are just gonna have a laugh now that you've seen that. Let me kind of show you this one. So the first step is that you have to pry off this wonderful fabric 
I don't know why it's fabric, but there is a fabric uh, cover and we have to now pry that off of the plastic chassis. All right, it's time. Let's do this. Oh, okay, boom, it's open. And guess what? Now that we have this chassis off, we still can't get to any components. While that was toolless, we now have a whole bunch of screws if we wanna do anything in the system. Now, usually on a Think Center Tiny, when you open up the chassis, you'll see things like the CPU socket and fan, and you'll see, you know, usually the two and a half inch hard drive mounting and all that kind of stuff. But here we just have, uh, we just have this metal plate, but there are three screws. And when you get rid of those three screws, I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, now that I've gotten those three screws done, now what we can do is we can actually open the system by pulling off this metal piece and now we're inside the system. And what you can see is something that should look very familiar to anybody that has seen our Tiny Mini Micro Series and these Lenovo units. Specifically, we have two SODIMM slots, and then we also have two SSD slots. But on this system, only one of the two SSD slots is actually populated, and we have a very small Western Digital 256 gig SSD here. This does use the Lenovo plastic mounting, which I think is absolutely awesome because you can actually do toolless mounting, even though it took three screws to get in here and also prying off that cover. But still, it's not too, too bad. Likewise, with the memory, since this is a 10th generation Intel Core system, and this particular system has a Core i5 10400T, we'll get to that in a little bit, but because of that, this system actually uses DDR4-2666 memory, so it's pretty inexpensive SODIM memory. And if you want to, you can go upgrade. This particular system has, I think, 12 gigabytes total, but if you wanted to go put more, have at it. Just based on the other systems that we've seen from Lenovo, we only tried up to two 16 gig DIMMs for 32 gigs in this one, still on a system that's about $545. I think that getting 12 gigs is actually great. I probably wouldn't even touch this configuration. It is a little bit weird though, the fact that you have a four gig and an eight gig DIMM in the two channels. So this is kind of a little bit different. Okay, now I mentioned how bad the serviceability is on this thing because not only to get to this section do we need to go and remove those three screws, but then if we wanna to get to the main part with the CPU and the hard drive and all that kind of stuff, there are actually four screws. And these four screws are an absolute pain. Okay, now I picked up this specifically to, I guess, highlight this challenge, but this one actually you know, is a screwdriver and you can put different bits in there and that makes life really easy, except for the fact that there are four screws and to get that, when you go and you put your screwdriver in here, the bits usually on all these screwdrivers that at least I have are too short to be able to fit in there. And so you can't actually get to the screw that you need to because the screw that you're trying to get to is all the way at the edge of the system. And the first three screwdrivers that I tried all had too short of bits to get there. So you basically need a screwdriver that is not thick at the end because you do have to go pretty far down in there to be able to go and actually get to the cover. But once you do that, you get four of these screws, you undo the screws, and now you can get inside the chassis. And you do that by simply popping the chassis off like this. And now that we have this open, you can definitely see that this is basically the Lenovo Tiny Platform in a plastic case. On the top up here, we actually have our processor, and we have the fan that you'd use and you know the shroud and all that kind of stuff to keep the processor cool. In this system, we got a Core i5-10400T, which is a lower power part, but it also still has six cores, 12 threads, and we'll show in our benchmarks that's actually decently fast. It's not definitely not crazy at all. One thing that is nice in this generation is that the Core i5 level, you actually get the hyper threading. So you go from, you know, where like say an eighth or ninth gen core, you might get something like six cores, six threads in this kind of segment. Now you're getting six cores, 12 threads, and that actually adds a decent amount of performance. So it's definitely a big uplift with this one. Now down here, what you're gonna notice is that we actually have a hard drive. This system for our $545 again, came with a one terabyte hard drive along with that 256 gig SSD. And because we're now in the system, everything is very easy to service. The fan shroud, you can just pop off. You can also just go and there's a single little latch right here and you can just pop that little latch. And then once you do that, the hard drive just kind of pops out. Now, most of the units that we have from Lenovo did have this cable. However, there are some, you know, that we've purchased secondhand that, you know, don't include this cable. So this thing is proprietary. So you're gonna have to go look at it online if you're gonna wanna go find it, but it should be the same one that works on the just kind of normal Think Center Tiny. So there should be a decent supply of them if you do need it. But you still get a two and a half inch drive that you can put. So you get your 256 gig SSD, a one terabyte 
hard drive in here, and that's not too bad. And even if you wanna go and replace this with a SSD at some point, it gives you a couple options. Now, the other big feature is that we actually have the Intel wireless. So we actually have Bluetooth, but we also have Wi-Fi 6 in the system. This is a little bit early to be able to have Wi-Fi 6E in an Intel platform. Uh, we typically only saw Wi-Fi 6 here. So that is just something that's kind of nice, but it also means that you get a giant upgrade. And Wi-Fi 6 is a huge upgrade over the previous gen AC Wi-Fi. So I definitely am pretty excited about this. And it's also kind of nice that this chassis doesn't have an external antenna. It just keeps everything nice and clean, which I do kind of like. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw your attention really quick here to the system and just show you kind of what's going on because I think it's gonna just make you laugh like it made me laugh. Again, the exterior of the system is all plastic but there is still actually an entire metal cage around the platform in here. They think they have to do that for like EMI or something like that. But they basically said like, hey, let's go have a plastic chassis. We can go put a cool little fabric color on, cover on it. And then they still ended up having a metal chassis inside. They just kind of wrapped it in plastic and a little bit of fabric. And since we are in the holiday season, this kind of reminds me of that angry elf scene in Elf you know, where you have the one writer and Miles Finch is there and he's like, okay, what do you guys got? And the first writer says, you know, well, what about a tomato and that's had tough times on the farm? And then Miles Finch says, no, no tomatoes. They're too vulnerable. Kids are already vulnerable. No farms, everybody's pushing rural, just be white noise. And then the second writer pitches his idea and he's like, what about a tribe of asparagus children, but they're self-conscious about the smell of their pee? And that was, I just thought that scene is like really funny, right? And that's basically, I think, what Lenovo went through when they did the system, right? They're like, okay, well, we have this really great thing already, but what if what if we put some plastic and, and maybe some fabric on it and made it less serviceable? Now, overall, performance on this is pretty darn good. And so I just kind of, we're gonna go throw up some charts here, but just kind of giving you the high level. This is a little bit slower than something like the Intel Core i5, 10 500T, it's a couple hundred megahertz slower, so it is slightly slower and you do definitely notice it. But on the other hand, if you're just kind of using it as a little server or you're just using it as a workstation, I, I don't necessarily think you're gonna really notice that much of a difference between the two because you still have that six core 12 thread configuration. There are some features though that you don't get. And one of them is because you have the H470 chipset and also the Core i5 10 400T, not the 500T, you don't get Intel vPro. So if you want that for remote manageability and have things like IKVM and stuff like that using vPro, you can't do that on a system like this one because the Idea Center just doesn't support it. Now the system comes with a 90 watt power supply. This is just Lenovo's standard rectangle power plug thing that you see in a lot of their notebooks. So it's also pretty easy to go get bigger power supplies. You can get a smaller, I don't think you want to, but you could get a smaller or just a replacement power supply. So it is definitely possible to go do that. In terms of power consumption, we saw basically in line with what we saw the Think Center do. So it's not necessarily that much different in terms of either idle or at maximum. And the other thing to just keep in mind here is that, that power supply that you have, the big important thing there is just the fact that because you can do things like charge things on your USB ports, you can use a lot of power that's not necessarily related to the system. So it's not just a CPU using power. It could also be like if you have your phone plugged in and you're trying to charge that or transfer files or something like that, and you're charging while you're doing that, that could be an example of where you'd actually start using a lot more power than if you just you know, had the system set up and you didn't have a whole bunch of peripherals plugged in. Okay, so with Project Tiny Mini Micro, I always like to have at least one key takeaway. <laughs> And this one is actually kind of fun. So I've already made fun a little bit of this whole plastic wrapping thing. I'm not a huge fan of just, you know, changing it to get this extra gray plastic, like maybe just paint the other chassis gray instead of black, or I don't know. It just, it's a little bit bigger and I don't really like the fact that they increase the size to make something more plasticky. And I guess it looks attractive-ish, but I don't know how much more attractive it really looks to me at least. Uh, I think that the Lenovo guys actually do a pretty good job on the Think Center. So I think maybe this is just to kind of take the basically same platform and make it less expensive. So that way they could say, oh, well, this is our consumer one, not our business one. And on the other hand though, if you are purchasing these things, this was a phenomenal deal. I mean, this was basically a pretty similar price to the Lenovo M80Q that we purchased with the Core i5 10500T. So you lose a couple hundred megahertz, but what we got in return was we got way more memory because we got 12 gigs in this. We went from a 128 gig SSD up to a 256, so we doubled the capacity and we got the one terabyte hard drive. So that's overall a big win as well. And I just kind of think that, you know, 
Overall, I think that this is a much better buy than that one that we purchased earlier this year. Now, of course, time has gone on, but on the other hand, at $545, this has a lot of functionality. I mean, if you're looking at something that was like a Core i5 6500T system, you know, there is a good chance that this is maybe about twice the performance and about less than twice the cost of one of those systems. So that kind of gives you a consolidation at just the $545 price point, which is definitely not too bad at all. I don't think I would spend $1,000 for this machine, but 545 bucks? Yeah, why not? Now, if you do go to the Lenovo site, they have been changing the deals on these. For example, the M90Q Gen 2 that we purchased, that one actually, I think, is like $60 more than when I bought it a week ago. So I, I don't know what to exactly tell you on that, other than the prices do tend to fluctuate a bit. And the other thing just to keep in mind is that Lenovo also, how they do their couponing and stuff like that at this time of the year, there's like discounts for their kind of, uh, you know, kind of just their normal discounting on systems. But then also there can be discounts that are like, you know, if you hit $500, you get X dollars off and there's all kinds of stuff there. So you may have to go play around and it does vary a little bit based on geography. So I got this for 545. I threw it up there for my order just so you could see it, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to get the same price, but you also might get something that's better as well. So check that out. The other thing I would give you a tip on is that Lenovo also has a number of these units with lower end processors that are in that like maybe about $150 less range, but they are significantly not as good. I mean, the Core i3 definitely is a much lower end processor than this. And some of the, you know, storage and memory configurations are much lower as well. And frankly, for that extra, you know, say $100, $150, I think that this is totally worth it. So I would definitely go and make sure because they are marketing a number of these models pre-built, I would definitely go make sure that you're getting the right one. I think this is probably my best value. So go check that out. I don't think we can do affiliate links, but maybe we can do one. And if we can, we'll put it in the description. You can use that. You can not use that. I don't really care, but what the heck? Again, Lenovo is not sponsoring this. I just purchased it just for the heck of it. Oh, hey, and there's one other thing that I really need to mention here is the fact that this system actually came with Windows 11 Pro. This is actually the first system that we've gotten with Windows 11 instead of Windows 10 Pro. And of course, I always suggest if you can get Pro over home so you can do things like have remote desktop and all that kind of stuff. I do just think that, you know, especially when you're getting these OEM systems, a lot of times there's not a huge upcharge. And sometimes in pre-configured systems like this, they just come with Pro. And so I would totally get Pro. It is fun though that this is the first system we've gotten with Windows 11. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the Lenovo Idea Center Mini 5. Now we are definitely getting back to the Project Tiny Mini Micro series. I just mentioned that we got the Lenovo M90Q Tiny Gen 2. And so we'll be doing that one pretty soon. And as always, if you like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.